Perhaps nothing gets discussed as much in the job search as the interview. You've made it through several hurdles, and now you get to meet your potential employer face to face. In fact, you may have several interviews for one job as you interview with people from different departments. Here are some of the things you need to know about coming in for an interview. The interview is to look at, will you be a fit for our company, whichever company it would be? Do you fit in our culture? Do you fit with our company goals and values? Would you be a good match for our company? Would you be a good match for this particular job? So I think an interviewer, an interviewee coming in, an applicant coming in for an interview need to be prepared. They need to do their homework. Don't come in and ask about a job that may not exist with that particular company. So do your homework, know the jobs, know what's expected, know the general rules of the company. The interview process is scary. Um, you're sitting across from, one, from someone and you're putting some people may look at it, you're putting your fate in their hands. Um, so there's a lot of nervousness and there's a lot of tension and there's a lot of desire to do well. But what people forget about interviews is that the person that you're sitting across from is a person too. They're just like you. They have bad days, they have good days, they're tired, they're annoyed, they're aggravated. So if you just relax. Appearance and presentation are all part of making the right first impression. Let's listen to how important this is in the interview process. First impressions are made very, very quickly. Sometimes within 30 seconds, a potential employer will decide whether or not you're a good fit for the organization. So you should prepare for the interview by investigating the organization. You should prepare for the interview by dressing appropriately. You should prepare for the interview and Often, I will suggest you prepare for the interview by role-playing with someone. So you sit down and you actually shake someone's hand, you look at them, you give them possible questions that you may ask, you prepare your responses in advance, and you prepare as much as you have ever prepared for anything in your life as you prepare for a job interview. I think that you have to be dressed appropriately. And keep in mind you are coming to a business, regardless to what business it may be. You're coming into a business. You have one time to make a first impression. You do not get a second chance. So you certainly want to be clean. You want to be neat. You do not have to come in, you know, a three-piece suit, but you certainly have to be dressed appropriately. Your shirt needs to be tucked in. You do not need your pants hanging or dragging. Jeans are not necessarily appropriate, regardless to their cost, in terms of an interview. In some cases, tennis shoes are not necessarily appropriate. Um, I think you have to be dressed for success. Dress appropriately in terms of you're coming for business, to a business, and you want to look like you mean business. So if you come with your weekend's t-shirt, then as an employee, I have to consider how serious are you going to be about this job. When people walk in my door, one of the first things that anyone really ever looks at is their first appearance. Are they dressed nicely? Are um, the clothes neat? And for a, a typical interview, anyone is going to want to dress it at a minimum of what I would call business casual, which would be slacks and a nice shirt. For ladies, it might be a dress and a blouse, or at least slacks and a blouse. You know, it's not really appealing if a person comes in in jeans. I've seen people come in in jeans and flip-flops, and you just rule those guys out right away because it says that you don't care. You want to keep the employer focused on what you're saying. You do not want to distract them by your appearance. So you want, again, you want to be dressed appropriately. And by that I mean clean, neat, not distracting. One of the things that shows very quickly is whether a person looks like they're ready for, to go into work. And so what does that look like, you know? Uh, it was certainly somebody who has appropriate attire for the job that they're going to do, uh, appropriate appearance. And so, you know, it's great to be looking like you're going out to, uh, for an evening or something like that. But when you come to work, you're supposed to be looking and dressed appropriately for work. Now, beyond appearance, I believe that it's really important um, when a person gets in front of you, how well they speak. You know, I, I can't have someone in my office who um, doesn't verbalize very well. You're dealing with customers day in and day out, and customers don't have a lot of patience for someone who doesn't speak well. 
Every job seeker needs to be prepared for the tough interview questions. Don't underestimate the importance of anticipating and knowing how to answer them. It's better to be prepared for your interview. If you can practice, have someone throw practice questions at you and you could probably do a lot of research and find out what practice questions that you could expect. You know, the common questions that you would hear in an interview would be, what are your weaknesses? What do you think your strengths are? Um, tell me about your experience. What did you produce at your last job? But if we start asking questions and you really don't know the answers to the questions, or from a standpoint of not being able to answer them quickly and sharply, the, you can tell when someone's quick and sharp. And if, the more prepared you are for the interview, the quicker and the sharper you'll be. Here are some other common yet difficult questions you should prepare for. Tell me about yourself. This is where you give a brief overview of who you are. This is not the time to tell your life story or to dive into a lot of personal information. Why should I hire you? Answering this one requires that you know something about the position. Give me an example of a time when you had to work with a difficult customer or coworker. The worst thing you can do is panic and fail to come up with an answer. Again, the key is to prepare for the interview and practice how you answer some of the tough questions. But it's important to recognize that those questions will be asked. Interviewers will ask you difficult questions and those will be the questions that separate the people who get moved on to the next level of interviewing or who get the job and the people who don't. It doesn't matter how many jobs you've had or how many different roles that you've played. You have to let the employer know that you've made a conscious decision to accept this position and leave this position. That you made a conscious decision to change careers that you made a conscious decision to move your family from one state to the next, that you weren't just blown along by the wind. Employers want to know that. So if you understand that, then you can relax. I have something that I can offer you. I have the skill sets that your office requires. I, I look at the environment in this office and I like what I see. I'm enjoying my conversation with you. Um, I'd like to help you solve your problem and this is what I can do for you. First of all, it is important to find out about the company itself. And you can do that now by going online and there's a tremendous amount of resources that you can find out about the company. If you were interviewing with a particular person, you should seek that person out, Google that person, find out what they've done, find out what their contributions to the company are because you want to be able to note that in your interview. That will distinguish you from the other thousands of people that are being interviewed. At the end of the day, it's not the nervousness that really matters, it's how you present yourself. You know, being nervous is okay. What you need to realize when it comes to being nervous is the person sitting across from you is just another person. Try and relax, be yourself, and if you can do that, what's important is how you actually present yourself and your experience from a job standpoint. Come early. Do not just come on time. Come early. Come prepared with a resume. Even though you have submitted it, I will tell you from the employer or the interview standpoint, that's, that's showing preparedness when a person comes in and have another copy of their resume available to give to the person at the time of the interview because it's convenient. It's right there. You brought it in. You were prepared. And then there are the interview don'ts. Some of the things I think you shouldn't say when you're in an interview, one of the most important things I would say would is don't be critical. If anyone's ever critical of their old boss or their old job or um, a reason why they left their last job, I pretty much rule them out right away. If they're critical to their old boss, they're probably going to be critical to their new boss, and that would be me, so I'm not going to have them. Uh, one of the things that sometimes job seekers do is in their eagerness to tell potential employers about themselves, they provide too much information. And so it's important to think about before you go into the job interview, what exactly are you going to say? It's important to answer the questions, to answer them truthfully and to answer them thoroughly, but not provide any additional information. A few things that a job seeker should not do in an interview process is, number one, answer the cell phone. Cut off your cell phone not even vibrate because in some cases vibrate is quite loud and it can be very distracting. And so some of the other things you should not do is 
oh, well, I was tied up, I was laid, I, you know, that's a signal. And if for some reason something has happened, then you need to call and let the interviewer know that you're going to be late, here's what happened. But don't just show up late. Um, I will say that the other thing you would not want to do is chew gum. That can be very distracting. You may want to leave your best perfume or cologne at home as well. Um, the other thing I would say what you would not want to do in an interview is bring your friends because you are the person being interviewed, not all of your friends. It's great to have a support group, but you don't need them at the time of the interview. They can wait for you someplace else so that they can meet you and you can talk about it when it's over, but do not bring your friends and family to your interview. Stand up on your own and be prepared and you'll be fine. And if you have issues with your past and are trying to figure out the right way to answer something, remember that the truth is always the way to go. There is nothing that will end a job faster than an employer finding out that you were not truthful. I think that if someone has a past, regardless to what it is, you want to be upfront and honest because it will be found out. Because what happens is that if you don't reveal it and the employer finds out, then you have falsified company records. You have falsified a document and then you won't get the job. You might want to practice how you're going to discuss that with the employer so that you're not fumbling through the process, but you're being honest and you're saying, this is something I did. I'm, you know, I'm not proud of it. This happened many, many years ago. As a result, here are the things I've done about it. If you've been terminated from a job, you also want to share that because you don't want to say, oh, well, I, you know, I left and I resigned when in reality you know that you were terminated. It's very easy to find out that type of information. Remember, an interview is a conversation. Be sure to ask questions that are relevant to the position or the company. You may want to ask the interviewer about future plans for the company or ask what they like most about working for the company. You may want to ask about the next steps in the interview process or when they would be looking for the person to start. Consider asking what a typical day would look like for the position. The most important thing is that your questions are thoughtful, show you were listening during the interview, and are genuinely interested. Also, consider more sensitive issues such as pay. While it's okay to ask the interviewer about the general pay range, avoid getting specific and avoid asking questions about benefits or holidays. Worry about those questions once they are ready to discuss a job offer. This program has been brought to you by the Workforce Investment Boards and Business and Career Solutions Centers of Southeast Louisiana, funded through a grant from the U.S. Department of Labor.